Okay, I've kind of laid out the brushes that I like to use and you don't need this many brushes but I'll just kind of talk very briefly about them. Uh, you you uh, would do really well by getting a nice uh, wash brush. It can be like this one here. It's a one and a half inch uh, flat brush and you can see it's kind of fat on the side here. It's great. It'll hold a lot of water and so that I can use that when I'm beginning a painting, you know, putting all the water on where the sky is. Or sometimes I'll do the whole sheet of paper wet into wet, um, and this will hold a lot of water. Now this one, it's um, black vel velvet, silver black vel velvet wash brush. That's what they often call them. It was a little pricey. I do remember that. And you don't need that. Um, you can get um, like here. I have it a two inch from the Mimic Squirrel. Um, brand from Jerry's Autorama and that'll also hold quite a lot of water and get around uh, your whole area quickly. You can also buy a hake brush, H-A-K-E hake brush. It's a natural, um, I think it's goat hairs and um, they come in different uh, varieties and they are, um, I think they're either uh, Japanese or Chinese brushes and um, they're very inexpensive. Or you can also get a hog hair brush. You know, just one of those cheap hog hair brushes that you can get at the hardware store. Uh, get a, you know, one and a half inch or two inches even, depending on how big you paint. Um, and that'll also hold a lot of water for you. So you don't have to go super pricey. And then this one is one of my newest loves. And that is a number 30 Mimic Squirrel brush from Creative Mark and that is um, a brand that Jerry's Autorama carries. Um, but anything big and round like this and I'll just wet it so you can see. The reason I love this brush so much is that it holds a lot of water because it's so fat. But look at this tip that it comes to. It comes to a really good tip and it was not very expensive. So that's a win-win. Um, and um, so so that one is great for bigger areas and because of the good tip I can get into like even small areas. Um, so that's a good brush. And then my, uh, my biggest love of brushes is a half inch dagger brush. A dagger brush is, has a very steep angle as you can see here. It's not like a regular um, uh, slanted brush. This one has a really big slant and unfortunately this was the brush that I used for many years and it was Daniel Smith that uh, that uh, had that in their in their uh, catalog but they discontinued carrying anything besides their paints so then I had to uh, search and search and search and I finally found another one that I like a lot and it's also not very expensive um, that's another half inch dagger brush and it's uh, from uh, Royal um, and uh, I think it's made in the United States. So anyway, th and it's under ten dollars. And my, I know my local art supply store in Reno, Nevada. Um, they, they, the name the name of them is Nevada Fine Arts. I teach classes there sometimes. They carry this brush, and um, you know they carry it um, for under ten dollars. So. I know most of my students, they have one of those. And then it's nice to have another round brush besides the fat one. Um, I have a number 14 here. I have a number 12 here. And this one is a number 8. Now you don't need all of this. Depending on, you know, what you feel comfortable with. Yeah, I would get one of those sizes. And these are the same brand as this one. Uh, Mimic Squirrel. But any other brand. What you want to test is that the hairs have a little bit of a snap to them so you know when they're like this and main thing is that they come to a fine tip like this when you wet them that's that's key and um, so then there's a couple more brushes that are really handy to have one is a liner brush that's like a, a a skinny brush with long hairs like this one and there again the same thing applies make sure it can come to a nice fine tip 
it's called a liner brush or squib brush or rigger brush that has many names. This one is a number three. Um, you can get it a little bit skinny if you want that. And then this little one, you can see it's also a skinny little brush. It is. It doesn't have nearly as long hairs. And that's called a detail brush. And that's for like little nitty gritty things. Um, and then I have one more liner brush that I got recently. And I love it a lot because this one is a, I think it was number four, is that right? I don't know if I can see it. Oh, I can't see it anymore. Um, it has, um, it's a little fatter than the other, it's almost like double, but it comes to a very fine tip. And so because it's fatter, has more hairs, it'll hold more pigment so I can do a really long line you know, and not run out of pigment and water. So it's a wonderful brush. And this one is a brush made especially for Sterling Edwards. He's a very, very good watercolor artist. I think it says it's number six here. I'm not quite sure. I don't remember, but I just know he only carries that same size. It was very inexpensive too. And he didn't charge a lot for shipping. So, but it doesn't, I again, the brand is less important. It's really that the, the brush feels good in your hand and that the hairs will come to a nice fine tip. And these are all synthetic brushes, except for this one I think is, I don't know what hair it is, but it, it feels like natural hairs, hair brush, maybe a squirrel or something. But nowadays with the technology we have, you can get excellent, excellent uh, brushes made, uh, you know, uh, you know, with uh, synthetic hairs. So there's no need to uh, buy the very expensive Kolinsky brushes or Sabre brushes or anything like that, in my opinion. That's just my opinion, but... Um, so there's the brushes I use. And then let's get to the paper. I like to use Arches Cold Pressed uh, Watercolor Paper. It's made from 100% cotton rag. And this sheet here is uh, 140 pounds, so that's going to buckle a little bit on you. But, you know, uh, if you're just starting out, it'll do just fine. And just a little tip, if you're painting a lot, like wet into wet, so you have a lot of water on the, on the, the paper, it, it'll probably buckle up for you a little bit. But all you need to do is grab a spray bottle and spray the back. And that, that'll, you know, make the back a little uh, damp also, and that'll flatten your paper straight, you know, out again when you're painting. Um, so that's not a problem. And I I paint a lot on the Arches 300 pound. You can see it's a lot stiffer and that doesn't buckle very much. So, you know, I don't have that issue. But it's also more than twice as expensive. So, you know, if you're on a budget, don't feel that you have to get 300 pound. 140 pound is fine. I would say, you know, if you get something that's a little bit thinner than 140 pound, that's when you start getting into trouble. And in watercolor, the watercolor paper is super duper important. Of all the things that you have to spend money on, the one place where you definitely don't want to skimp is on your paper. Because the paper interacts with the water and the pigment. And if you're having cheap paper, that means it's not made from cotton rag, it's made from wood pulp and it reacts completely different. And what we need in watercolor, we need that slow absorption of the moisture, the water, the pigment into the paper that cotton will give us. Otherwise, you know, first on a, on a wood pulp, the, the water and the pigment will sit on the top and then it'll just kind of fall in like that. Um, whereas the cotton paper slowly absorbs it, you get these nice smooth wash, washes. So uh, well worth it. And then a very important tool, of course it's watercolor, it's water. You want to have clean water and I always say, you know, have, have two containers. One that you rinse your brush out in so that the water is dirty and then one where you try to keep the water clean um, for when you're diluting the colors and mixing them up on your palette and stuff like that. Um, very important and you know when it sooner or later you're gonna mess up and they're both gonna be dirty and then you take a little break and go get yourself some clean water and then you want to have some mister bottles you can get some regular just uh, fine mister bottles at the um, hard, uh, hardware no not the hardware store at the um, drugstore you know in the travel section 
uh, and they'll give you a fine mist and then if you can find them I would say get one of these dot bottles and what's the dot bottle? It's a bottle let me see if I can find the camera here. There. Can you see? There is the arrow and then there's a little dot behind it. I don't know if you can see that. Um, that's a dot bottle and um, again my local art supply store they carry the dot bottles they understand the dot bottle dilemma and otherwise there's a guy that has a website his name is Everett and um, he has even a little um, a little uh, video on his uh, on his website where he shows the difference between a regular mister bottle and a dot bottle and uh, he was you know there has been uh, uh, an interruption in the supply of dot bottles. We had almost like a year where we didn't have access to dot bottles and now we have them back again so I'm very excited because I use it for a lot of different things for texture and stuff like that in my paintings. Um, I do draw once in a while, not much, but um, I use just a number two pencil. It's one of the ones I get at one of the office supply stores like this in a pack and, and you know it's a uh, has a thin lid in here and it's just I don't have to sharpen it and stuff I like that. Don't ever use uh, this eraser, especially on your watercolor paper. Use a kneaded eraser that's like this. Oh, yeah, I have a little piece. They come in like little squ squares. They look gray, most of them. Some of them have different colors. I've seen them in blue and yellow. But it's, it's literally like that. You can knead it. And so when you erase, you can often, you know, you just maybe roll it over. And you can also erase the old-fashioned way. Um, but it doesn't damage your watercolor paper, and that's very important. So kneaded erase is very important. Then I like to use um, old credit cards or room keys or whatever, and I cut them in two pieces, like this, on a little bit of an angle, and that way I get a really pointy side, and then, you know, I have the two rounded corners that they come with, uh, and then I have some longer sides that I can use for scraping out things. I use it for scraping out rocks and twigs and stuff like that. You'll see that if you watch my demos. Uh, a little bit of uh, table salt. I put it in these uh, little old pill boxes. Um, I use that for texture. And that's again, you know, you'll see that in some of my videos. Um, I love to use PBO drawing gum. Uh, that's my favorite, my favorite masking fluid. Masking fluid, drawing gum, frisket, it has many names. Um, and um, I use to uh, I, I I use like either the back of my brushes like a brush like this one that has like a flat end. It's great for you know putting on masking fluid. Don't use your watercolor brushes. And then to take off masking fluid, I like to have a rubber cement eraser. It'll it'll pick up the masking fluid easily. Otherwise, you can rub it off with your fingers. But sometimes that can be a little you know if you have a lot on it. I, I feel that hurts. And then, one other thing, since I'm going through all my, my uh, things that I use on a fairly regular basis, is Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. This box here is what you need. Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, original. Don't get new and improved, because they put chemicals in then, and we don't need that. Uh, this is for lifting out, and you can basically get back to the white of the paper almost. Um, depending on how staining your colors are, uh, without damaging your paper too much. If you use a scrubber brush, you really rough up your watercolor paper and you can't paint on it again. Mr. Clean, you know, he's not as rough. So he's a good little guy to have in your toolbox. And then uh, sometimes, if I'm, you know, I paint a lot of not only evergreens, but I also paint a lot of aspens. And then uh, sometimes for the little twigs and stuff, I use this uh, white gel pen. And that is from Uniball uh, Signo, and uh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful um, white pigment ink pen, permanent. So there are a lot of pens out there, but for the white, from my experience, this is the this is the best one. Some of the others, you know, they don't they don't really work that well on the watercolor paper, and then. Uh, um, they don't cover as well. I think that's what I like best about that one. It covers really well. And then sometimes I will uh, combine pen and ink 
with my watercolors and um, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the Pigma Micron pens. They come in a, do a lot of different um, tip, tip thicknesses and they come like really really fine like this one here 0 02. Um, so sometimes I like to do pen and ink work on my watercolors. So I think that's pretty much it. And then, you know, very important, but I'll talk more about that when I do my painting demos. And you've probably already heard me say that. I am, you know, a big, big, big uh, fan of having a good water control station. So I like to, you know, take old towels and I just tear them up into, you know, some decent sizes, They're not too clunky. And then I take um, Viva paper towel, the old fashioned kind that doesn't have any pattern on it and I bundle that up and have that here and that's where my brush goes all the time. From the palette to here, from my painting to here, from the water buckets to here so that I always can control the water in my brush because that's what watercolor is all about. Water control. Control of the water in your brush and um, understanding how much water you have on your painting versus in your brush and uh, that's the key to watercolor. So I'll see you in a painting demo soon and um, after this one here I'm going to show you how to make I'm going to show you how to make um, that uh, color guide for your palette. That's going to be my next video that I'm going to upload so I can show you exactly how I do this not that it's like that complicated but you know I have I have a reason for doing it the way I'm doing it and I'll share that with you. So in the meantime, happy painting and see you soon.